Welcome to Game Crunch, your weekly video game podcast. My name is Mike Anastasia. With me today, we have Nick. Hello. I'm Brandon. Yo. We're going to talk about games and things. Games and things. Games. Games and things. Games and things. Games, games and, and things. things. Hell yeah. <clears throat> Let's see what's on the agenda. Bioshock. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about Neon White. There we go. I'm going to actually oh, talk White. about it. Oh, yeah. I'm actually excited to hear about that because it, that game has gotten better reviews than I expected. It's yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, let's see, I played Fire Emblem Three Hopes finally. Like past the demo, I finally actually played like the full game. Nice, nice. I've, I've been neglecting to play it for the last month. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then I watched a little bit of that Resident Evil TV show. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. I've only so, seen yeah. screenshots. I'm excited to talk about that. Yeah, it's a TV show. Yeah, play a TV show. <laughs> um, I'll start first, I guess. That's good. Let's go. We'll work our way down. I'll do Fire Emblem Three Hopes. So I finally got, like I said, I, if you guys remember, I talked about it a bit when I played the demo. And then I, I played like mm-hmm. the first chapter of it. And I was like, oh, it's just, you know, whatever. And then I played more and I was like, oh, shit, there's a lot more to this game. And the more that I play, like the more that there's just more to this game. Um. It's interesting because like the gameplay is definitely very Muso, but it is so much Fire Emblem's Three Hopes that uh, I think it's pretty hard to separate the two. Like it's like there's so many mechanics that they took just straight out of the game, um, like the the class building stuff, the class switching, the support system works the same. Those you can go on like little dates with the people. Again, really go and ask them questions and like stare at them. Um, it's got like the food building mechanic, it's got the it's got like everything, like every pretty much every system that was in Three Hopes is in this or Three Houses is in Three Hopes. Like, it's it's there's just a lot of overlap, and, like, it's a really good game. Like, I, I really enjoy what I've played so far. Um, it is. If you don't know, it's kind of like a story wise, it's like an alternate universe kind of thing. Like, you're not playing as Biolith, you're mm-hmm. playing as what's his name? Like, Shaz. Shaz, he's got a dumb name, it's something like that. Um, but he's got like some sort of thing living in his head, too. Um, so you got all that going on that gives him like superpowers that you can power up. But then when you're on the maps, it's like your Muso gameplay, but you're mm-hmm. still doing like the Fire Emblem kind of stuff. Like, you have the the class advantages you have all the different like weapon levels durability of weapons gives you like special attacks like those kind of things the crests are in this game just like they were in three houses they give you like special abilities and let you use like the like the legendary weapons uh there's and then it's got like that the like the class triangle everyone can switch to every class like each character is not it's not like any other muso game where like the characters are just like Oh, you know, Link can use the crossbow, and then Zelda can use the book, and you know, it's like no, everyone can be anything. You want uh, Clyde to be or Claude? You want him to be a mercenary? You can do it. You want him to be an archer? You can do it. You want him to be a priest? You can do it. Whatever you want, you can switch everyone in and out of every class and okay. level them up. So it's just wow. There's just a lot to this game, and then from what I can tell, there's at least each class because if you remember, there's like the three houses. The yellow, or no, the golden deer, the blue something. I don't remember what all their names were. I forgot. Or black I, uh, eagles. I, all, all I know is that it was golden deer because that's that that's the path I chose. Yeah, that's hot boy summer. That's the one you got. Yeah, on. that's that, that one's <laughs> definitely hot boy summer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that's the path I'm playing three ops now too. You know, you got to start with hot boy summer. But yeah, so there's each of the different paths, and it kind of takes off like a different thing, and so. But unlike a lot of the other Muso games, too, like each path is actually its, its own distinct maps with its own distinct stories. Um, so that's pretty rad. Um, I guess there's different endings depending on how you progress through. Uh, and then each like story chapter, there's like kind of like little submissions to go through as well if you want. Um, so it's there's just a, there's a lot going on, and it's a lot of fun. And even on the maps too, like you do have your four playable characters, but then you can usually bring in like four like four of your other characters you can't play as them directly but you can order them to go places on the map for you just ai controlled characters or you can have them like 
uh, team up with you as part of like that kind of like the pairing up thing, which I forgot what it's called already. So you got that. And then even then with like the story battles too, you get these points that you can use to do things like during the course of the thing. And you, you have to decide how you want to allot them. So, like, it might give you a choice of, like, ten different things, but you only got enough points for, like, three. But they might be like, hey, do you want to recruit Petra? Or do you want to arrange these boats into a bridge um, so you can get from this side to this side? Or do you want to have, like, a barrage of archers always firing arrows on the enemy? Then you can, like, decide how you want to do those points and, and divvy it up. It's super complex, but it's, like, if you like Three Houses, I think you'll really like this game. If you like, if you're a big fan of like Muso games, you'll probably like it too because there's all that Muso stuff in there as well. Uh, there's just a lot going on. It's really a surprisingly much deeper experience than I expected to. Like much more technical than say Age of Calamity was. Like Age of mm. Calamity was a lot of fun. It had a great systems. I'm not saying anything bad about Age of Calamity at all. I was saying like compared to that, like the level of depth on the systems here. It's it's pretty significant. Like they just they added that much to the game. So I I'm, I'm guessing some of it has to do with the fact that if you remember Three Houses was made by Tecmo Koei. And uh-huh. because this is, you know, a Warriors game, this is also made by Tecmo Koei. So I'm guessing there's probably a bunch of overlap between the, the two teams. Um but yeah, no, it just it really just kind of feels like a whole nother glimpse into this world that just really smartly thought out and very um what's the word i'm looking for just very keenly aware of like its source material and embracing it and really trying to take advantage of the things that made three houses three houses and fire emblem fire emblem um, yeah. i think this is i think this is a better crossover than fire emblem warriors was the first one like that one just kind of out like fire emblem characters in the you know muso game this one okay. kind of feels like um warriors gameplay and like three houses like just kind of like the opposite way if that makes any sense so sort of yeah it's kind of like they built with the the three houses gameplay and they're like well instead of the turn-based strategy stuff we'll just do the muso gameplay whereas like the other one they're like let's start with the muso gameplay and add in fire emblem characters so just kind of feels like they're going at it from different angles um and i think that's why you see like a lot more care and like detail and uh, attention to the franchise in this one. So um, I really like it. I definitely would recommend it. I've kind of gotten sucked into it the last couple of days. I, I, there's, there's a shit ton to do in this game. This, I mean, I don't think it's as time sucking as like Hyrule Warriors is like the first one where it, it probably would take you a thousand hours to unlock everything. Uh, this one, I think you can probably get through in a good clip, but it's still going to be like, probably 80 to 100 hours to get through like because you have to go through three different campaigns to unlock everything then there's unlockable characters after uh like post game and all that stuff there's new game plus where you can carry stuff over there's just there's a lot of stuff i've not got a new game plus yet i've just already looked to see what it was i know it's there so yeah okay that's pretty cool sounds neat yeah i, I, I will definitely too. be playing this i will be picking this up at some point Oh, uh, yeah. Like, this possible. is definitely right down your alley. And you like Three Houses, too, right? Yeah, I like Three Houses. And I also love Muso games. They're some of my favorite. Like, yeah. just turn your brain off and and kill a few hundred hours. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think this one, too, um, it definitely seems like it runs better than Age of Calamity does. I mean, I'm sure there's probably still slowdown that I'm just not aware of. I still really uh, need to play Age of Calamity as well. That's a that's the one I never played either. Really, I think Age of Calamity plays great. Like I think it's a fantastic game. Um, like I didn't dive into that one that much. I just mm-hmm. need to sit down and do so. <clears throat> yeah, no, they're both definitely worth it. Um, and both of them have demos, so you can always try out. Either one. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think both of them even have. I think both the demos even are like the transfer over your progress kind of things. Okay, that's so good. Like even. So, um, but the, the one for Fire Emblem Warriors was surprisingly lengthy. I was actually impressed how much, because I think he gives you like three or four stages to play through. Um, oh, that is actually watch. pretty lengthy. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, did you guys have any questions on Three Hopes? No. Nope. Otherwise? No. Um, I'm not typically into the Muso games, because, uh-huh. I mean, I 
I have a very negative opinion about them. Um, oh, I want to hear. I'm serious. Uh, I, I mean, so like, I just think all the Dynasty Warriors are shit games in general with not a lot of effort put into them. Um, and then the Zelda ones even more so because I run like dog shit. Um, but I, some, as I, somebody who likes three houses. Can I give a counter for you if you don't mind? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is it that they're not meant to be good? No, no, no. I, actually, I think they're very, they're very good games. I think you're focusing on the fact that they they get churned out so quickly, and that's what makes them of lower quality to you. I think if you actually were to sit down and like dive into a, a series that you actually like really enjoyed, if it was like made into a Musou game, like for instance, one of my favorite Musou games that was made is Fist of the North Star. Uh-huh. which was made uh and it was made by the yakuza developers and it exists on uh ps4 i believe it was and it also even has like the yakuza characters in it as dlc and that game is fucking phenomenal it's mm-hmm. so good um i think depending on what muso game you play you can get a lot out of it so like for instance You've got your normal Dynasty Warriors games and that sort of deal, but there's been other ones where they've had like crossovers with other games and like combine them all together. So like yeah. you've got all these weird things, and then you got ones that are based on things like One Piece, for instance. And the One Piece one's like really fucking good. It's also like a super condensed way to get the entire One Piece story and actually get a very good grasp on it mm-hmm. through like a 15 hour, 20 hour game, that sort of deal. And um, on top of all that, like, there's just so many different ways that uh, Muso games play that depending on, like, what kind of game you're looking for, because you've got ones that are more, like, straightforward. You've got, like, the Berserk one, which even has, like, an entire, like, extra dungeon sort of deal where it's, like, you, you kind of go up a tower, that sort of stuff. Um, but you also can, like, play through the entire uh, story of Berserk even past, like, the Golden Age arc, which most of the time, uh, <laughs> most information on Berserk doesn't go past the Golden Age arc. And, um, yeah, I think Musou games get a bad rap sometimes. No, I do I think I the Zelda games are, like, very well made, uh, even though they run poorly, but I think that's a problem with the hardware at the end of the day. Like that, that, that was my thing. That my quality thing comes in whenever I see the ones that are made on Nintendo systems in mm-hmm. particular. They always look like they run like shit. I'm like, that's yeah, I would. I recommend money. not playing the Nintendo ones if you yeah. want to play a good Musou game. Like I said, play like the Fist of the Star thing, or play um, the, any of the One Piece ones that even have like PC ports and everything. They're okay. very fun. I don't know. What was the rest of your question, though, Nick? Because I was going to say, like, as somebody who enjoyed Three Houses a lot, like, would you say that this would be an enjoyable experience for me? Oh, I think so. I I, I think they, they built this game starting with Three Houses, and then they added the Musou elements in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to the other way around. So, um, I think the game plays pretty well. I've not really had any issues with how it plays. Um, and I feel like, I, I think my counter to, like, what Brandon was just saying, though, too, is I feel like your attachment to Muso is directly related to the subject material. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, Nick, like I know the Zelda ones never really struck a chord with you, but you're also not like a huge Zelda fan either. So yeah, I don't. That's that's not the case though, because even like ones that aren't geared towards me, like that are would be geared towards me, like the Persona one. Like I have no interest in really playing it because of the Muso. That's game. a really good one though. It's even a direct sequel to Persona Five. Yeah, like see, I would rather just see what the game's story was about and just like read it up on it then rather than mm. play it oh, it's really same good, thing with though. um what was the first fire emblem muso game fire emblem warriors warriors yeah, yeah warriors yeah like i i would honestly i like fire emblem i would rather not play that game yeah and like i said with that one too like i feel like that one they took like a muso game and just added fire emblem characters yeah this one i feel like they took three houses and added muso gameplay instead so it's kind of like they went at it from a different angle. Like this is very much three houses. Okay. Like all all the subsystems in the game from three houses are in this game. And Nick, um, how do you feel about mechs? Talk about mechs. Yeah, how do you feel about mechs? Um, I mean, mecha in general. It's cool. It's cool shit. There are Gund- three Gundam. Dynasty Warriors Gundam games, and they're all fucking excellent. If you could ever get a hold of them, those are really fun. <clears throat> mm-hmm. and they're like a uh, mecha fans like dream 
because they go so in depth into like so many different mechas and so many different things and it, it's just it's a lot of fun. Those are those are probably some of my favorite Muso games, just in general. Because like you have the ones where it's like, oh, okay, well, um, we're, we were fighting on Earth. Oh, yeah, whatever. But then you have like the fucking, um, like I think it's Dynasty Warrior Gundam two or maybe three, and just you're just straight up in actual space fighting, and it's it's really fucking cool to do so. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, like Mike was saying, I think your attachment to it will be directly based off of what the subject material is. But yeah, yeah. Man, that's possible. I mean, I like, I like Dynasty Warriors even because I think Dynasty Warriors is really interesting because I think a lot of the characters are very cool that they have made and a lot of their move sets are actually super neat and interesting and they work off of each other very, very well. But mm-hmm. like, I would never say play any Dynasty Warriors past like eight. <laughs> <laughs> Nine yeah. is just fucking trash. <laughs> I mean, I would say two natures, like I said to, to Brandon, just download the demo for the game. Give it a try. Like, you got nothing to lose. Yeah. Um, just don't be like me and make sure you play at least to the end of the demo. Because the demo does, like, kind of, like, taper everything in. So, yeah. the first one just kind of, like, when I played the first level, I was just like, oh, it's just another Muso game. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, when I talked about it on the podcast. And then, like, when I played more, I was like, oh, like, everything is here. But they just kind of like they just they they give you just like bits of the system at a time, so you're not overwhelmed. Um, but like I said everything is in there. It just you just kind of have to keep on going to see it. So, I mean, they're still unlocking things in that game. Like, like I feel like through. the appeal of like um, Zelda Musou game was the like the the treasure map elements of it that they had, like the little extra things that were there and unlocking them and doing the secret things and whatnot that that was really cool. Like how they had, what exactly was that called? Uh, Mike, help me out here. Oh, what was it? It was called, was it called like quest mode or something? Maybe, but like they, they, they wrapped it up in a nice little package where they were able to kind of have like, Oh, you know, actual, quest system in it and it was really neat and interesting and i liked that about those games in particular and it seems like if you play any of the games that are outside just the normal dynasty warriors and hell even some of the dynasty warriors ones there's some kind of mode that's specifically tailored to that game genre and like that is where the meat and potatoes are and that's where something's going to hook you if you end up playing that mode Mm -hmm. over anything else well, I think Hopes does really well too because it just focuses on like the three houses stuff, just not like not like the franchise as a whole, like Fire Emblem mm-hmm. Warriors or even like Hyrule Warriors did. Like it's mm-hmm. just like it's it's just dead centered on that one game. So it just it plays with the characters that are in there. Like I said, all the characters from the house are in there and they're all playable. Um, so like they do a really like interesting job. You get the support conversations like you would before, so you still get like story stuff pretty like strongly sprinkled through it they brought through back all the these it sounds like it, all the original voice actors and everything um that's it just it's a really well polished experience so cool. that's all i got on fire emblem unless you have any other burning questions i believe so yeah. all right let's talk about a franchise that's not been so polished resident evil <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i saw i watched we only watched one episode of the show Mm. I'll just out there out and say that. I've only hey, seen Greg. the out of context screenshots on the internet. Yep, same. I've only seen the out of context videos and stuff on online and I'm just like, what the fuck? I don't know. The show's not good. I, I know <laughs> some people IGN loves know it. that. Do they? I IGN, don't know. I think it was either IGN or GameSpot. One of them said that Resident Evil is not only the best adaptation of Resident Evil, but also in- deserves to be included in like the pantheon of good video game adaptations. Oh, really? Someone's I, really drunk. I read something today said that said this was the worst like Netflix show that's ever been produced. So I read something recently after this release that asked, "Is Netflix making shit shows on purpose?" And, you know and it was a very is- interesting like write up everything. Going into the logistics of them, like, just pumping out content just to pump it out. 
and like how that would help their brand because it's just more stuff on there to have people click through no matter what if it catches their attention they're gonna look at it and it doesn't really matter because as long as you have content on there you're not having to pay for the big content like the things that are licensed by other television companies so you can pay some whatever director this much money to work on some popular franchise instead of going out there and being like hey give me the rights to the office hey yeah. give me the rights to breaking bad or whatever or certain movies and as such that it's easier for them to do that and more cost effective for them to make shit shows that have no like no no reason to exist just to fill space on their actual service over actually paying for the rights of good shows I mean, I, that's not necessarily wrong at all. And I think with this one, though, in particular, I think my thing is, because I was thinking about it today, because someone was like, well, you know, if this if this show was called, like, Dead Zombies or something, and it was just a generic zombie TV show put out by Netflix, nobody would have batted an eye, it would not be so panned or whatever. But I, I don't actually think I agree with it. I think this show still fucking sucks. Um, and I don't I don't know if I would watch it even then. This show uh, fucking sucks. And then when you try to apply like the logic of like Resident Evil to it, like just it does it, it doesn't make any sense. Like they just moved to a city called New Raccoon City. Like, hey, okay. how fucking dumb do you have to be? Like, yeah. oh, the city was nuked because of a zombie attack. Let's make a new one. Like, okay, I mean, whatever. It's Resident Evil. Let's just be cliche. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Wesker's played by Lance Riddick. Which is, I don't know, whatever. I've heard there's context to it. I've not seen the episode where it's explained yet. Uh, but he's about the most opposite man that I would mm. imagine playing Wesker. He is one of my favorite actors, though. And he is the highlight of the show. So is it necessarily a bad thing? I don't know. I, I'm i sure there was some choices that went into it that make sense. <laughs> this but, was uh, one <laughs> well, like I said, you got a great actor. You have an excellent actor. If you could make it make sense, I don't give a fuck. See, the I thing is, though, actor. too, just in general with That's Netflix. I feel like anytime Carlos Despacito is in anything, oh, yeah. I'm just like, Speaking as long as you have him, yes. Speaking of which, Brandon, I just yeah. finished rewatching season one of The Boys with my girlfriend because she's never seen it before. That's and then so he, shows up at the, he shows up at the end, you're like, yeah, of yes. course you're that guy. But yes. um, no, what's funny is, is like, I feel like Netflix, for, for most of their shows, do find some decent actors. Like, I mean, obviously there's the Cowboy Bebop show that's going to ever live in infamy as being really shit. But mm-hmm. they have, um, oh, what the fuck's his name? As playing, um, uh, oh the guy God. who played Jet, who was fucking incredible. Cause yeah, like, <laughs> I, I guess you could say like the guy from uh, Harold and Kumar or whatever. I'm uh, to what his, I didn't want to call him that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. Yeah, like, no, no, I get that. Actors. It's because you look because it's like, oh, that's an actor I recognize for some such and such thing. And if you have that actor, you have that click through rate and it doesn't matter if the yeah. content is good or not, because people are going to check it out no matter what. I don't know. No, it's, I, I'm, it's maybe I'm being insane. a little bit too cynical, but I kind of agree with what that article was saying. It makes a lot of sense to me. Why pay ridiculous amount of rights to have a show on your uh, platform for a uh, you know a small amount of time, and when you could just make your own shit shows and have people watch them and not have to pay anywhere near the amount yeah. of, of licensing fees, it's like, like yeah gonna, that that makes sense. Watch it regardless. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna watch it regardless because of who you have in it. Yeah. and and I guarantee you, it's not like that big a deal to them. They don't probably give a shit. No, and it's but you know it's it's that whole like so just drop something like Stranger Things, and then then they'll just get their subscriber base back. Yeah. for a bit so it's like yeah. whatever it's the whole quantity versus quality thing i yeah. think that that folks is definitely going more towards quantity and you know it's interesting seeing something like because on apple tv is like the opposite side of the spectrum yeah. i, I even think like, amazon is like because like we were talking about the boys a second ago the boys is fucking incredible but like that's that's one thing you know but we got quality in that yeah and that sort of thing well i mean stranger things is excellent too it is. I mean, and I mean, Amazon doesn't put out that much good shows. Uh, the, no, that's, what, that, that's what I was talking about. Whereas, like, they'll they'll drop like one or two good shows, and it's like, okay, that's the quality over quantity, that yeah. sort of thing, more so. 
where Netflix will just pump out, you know, quantity, quantity, quantity. And sometimes they'll have like a hit here or there, but like Amazon doesn't pump out that much at all. But some of the things that they I pump think, out, it's just like straight quality. I think you, have, I think Amazon has more than you think they do, Brandon. You're probably right. I, I just I probably don't, I just don't think attention. they, I don't think anyone does because nobody gets Amazon prime for the videos. They should get it yeah. because oh, yeah, they, they want the free delivery yeah. and it just happens to have it. Um, Maybe I mean, Hulu it, would have been a, a better thing because, yes. like, so the Hulu's original thing, like, yeah, you're you're there to watch your shows, like whatever's on Fox or whatever's here, or there, or anywhere else. But like a lot of uh, Hulu's specific, like Hulu-based shows, or that are only on there, are like really good. And then for me, I really like Shutter. Shutter is like specifically for horror movies and stuff like that. But like, they don't have a large variety, but what they do have there is really fucking good. But then it's also a real TV channel, though, too, right? Uh, no, there is no actual television channel. They just have their, like, content streaming 24-7 on their website. Oh, okay. Yeah, Shutter's yeah. just its own thing. Didn't Never it had a TV a station. Nope, not that I'm Which aware of. Which channel am I thinking of, then? Uh, well, I what don't What was know. the horror channel? Sci-fi. Uh... <laughs> no, there was one that was specifically just horror movies. Hmm. I thought it was Shutter, but... I don't. Remember. I never knew of Shutter having know, a television station. If if I'm wrong and you can prove me wrong, oh, then no, I don't. I don't remember. I'm just saying. Like I thought I because there was. Well, here you go. I just have no idea. TV channel, and I thought it was Shutter, but I. Hmm. Uh, but I. I'm not so like set on it. Let's see what we yeah. can Oh, it says it's streaming service. Um, I think really there was. One. So I think Shutter existed before streaming was a thing, and Shutter was just on like. Like it was like an extra TV channel you could get. I don't know because I remember um, it existing like when I was like in grade school. It's like it's pretty old. Shutter is an online streaming on-demand horror streaming service owned by AMC. Yeah, no, I mean that's what. So what was it? I prior... don't remember the channel I'm thinking of. That I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about too. There was something prior to Shutter that was like an all horror. It was TV like all network. horror. Yeah, yeah, hold on. We could figure this out. It had a name like Shutter. Uh, Legend? No. Okay, because I was looking I... that up, and apparently that was a... What was Shutter? Interesting. Let's see here. I remember, too, because it would always have, like, these great trailers for movies, and I would yeah. watch them, and then, like, it would turn on, and it would be like, UV Bowl! And it'd be like, oh, no. <laughs> or it'd be like, I'm not travel on you'd be like, oh no. <laughs> oh. Like the, they looked so good and then you like see who made it and you're like, oh no. Uh. Um either way. I know what you're talking about, because there was definitely something before. Because when my friend first got like like when when on demand first came out. Wait a minute. Like I have a question. Something. I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Was it shout? I don't know if it was shout. I don't shout. think it was shout either. Okay. Like it had, it had. A name. It was like, did do horror. Like now was like they're so, mostly like, yeah. now they're mostly anime, but yeah, and like shit like that. Fucking like weird. it had um, a name like Shutter, like maybe it was like Slasher. Like it had like uh, yeah, a name something. that just sounded like very like horror based. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. But I don't remember what it was called. I wish I could. I wish I knew. I I really do. I don't know though. Oh wait, I found horror chiller. Chiller. That, that was, was the it. one. Chiller TV. That was it. That was it. Defunct American cable and satellite television yep. network that was owned by NBC Universal Cable. That makes sense. Launched yep. in 2007, closed down in 2017. Yep. There you go. That's, That's the one. That's it. Yeah. That makes sense. And I could totally see how I jump from chiller to shutter. I mean, it's definitely kind yeah, of like kind of yeah, mm-hmm. no, it definitely had uh But but I'm going to um, I'm going to Whore out Shutter for a second. Whenever it comes Halloween time, you should definitely look into getting a, like a subscription to Shutter or like a free trial or whatever. They have some fucking great content during Halloween on there, and a lot of their originals. Like I don't know, Nick, if you've seen this yet, but have you seen or heard of One Cut of the Dead? No, I'm not a big horror movie guy. So that's the thing. A lot of Shutter isn't just specific like ooh 
jump scare horror, that sort of thing, or ooh, slasher horror. It's like it's broken up into genres on there, and you have like psychological, you have things that are like you know, like natural disaster, you have things that are like more realistic, you know, like creepy stalker, you know, suspense horror kind of deal, and like it kind of goes into different genres and like types of horror or even things that might not necessarily be considered horror but more of like a thriller sort of deal um on there and like they've had some really good shit on there it's it's not all like ooh super spooky five me sort of deal and like one cut of the dead is actually one of those that is not super spooky five me but is an absolutely incredible movie that i highly recommend anyone watch um because, yeah, it's just really fucking good. And the only place you can watch it is Shudder. It's it's a foreign horror film, so that should go ahead and put that into perspective a little bit of just how fucking good it is. But I literally yeah, can't I like tell you anything else it. without, like, spoiling it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Shudder has some good stuff on it. Absolutely. I just ended our subscription for it. Yeah, I'm probably going to start back ours in, in, in like, a month, because that's normally what I do. Um... What else was I going to say? I think that's about it. I'll probably watch more Resident Evil eventually. Or at least where I am right now. Yeah. Uh, I have I've no seen, interest. In yeah, I have no interest either. But I will watch more out of context shit. Because that's that shit's funny. DJ was just like... Because we were watching it together. And he, like, he, he loves zombie stuff. And he loves dumb TV shows. Mm-hmm. Like He watches the dumbest, dumbest TV shows. He hated it. He's like, I can't watch any more of this show. <gasps> Escape was from it, New York's on here. Was it, Sorry. was it the part where the girl talked about watching Zootopia porn? Is that what did, did it mean? <laughs> I don't even think it was that. It's just like the action <laughs> sequences are just like so dumb. Because it was weird because like the, the, the zombies, like when you first see them, they only re- react to like blood. Was it the Katy Perry musical after like Wesker was revealed? <laughs> oh, I don't remember. But then, like, the girl's just, like, fucking around, and then she, like, stabs her hand, and she's like, oops, and then, like, the zombies chase her, and then, like, you just really don't know what's going on, you don't care about her, she's annoying, like, she has no redeeming, like, personality features that I've seen yet. Mm -hmm. Her sister just seems like she's dumb as a stump. Uh, Like I said, the the only redeeming thing in this entire show is Lance Riddick, because he's amazing. I love that man. I just just don't understand, like, why he's Wesker. It just it just it just seems like a very odd choice for me, but like I said, I they haven't really like unveiled like well they because this is supposed to be like a canonical like Resident Evil thing, and so like the reason that Wesker is back because Wesker is dead as you may recall from Resident Evil Five, mm-hmm. so why he's back in a game that takes place you know ten years later or whatever, all of a sudden it has two daughters, like I'm just like I don't understand. And I don't understand why you're Lance Riddick. So, great actor. But I just don't know. <laughs> I love that, man. He's still great. Did you guys ever watch... Um, oh, what's the show? Fringe. That's the one. Um, yeah. No. Excellent show. If you like the X-Files, that kind of show, then you'll love Fringe. Wait, wait, I may have seen Fringe. I saw, like, the first season, I think. Yeah, yeah I was, definitely it, saw the first season of Fringe. It was a Fox show, and it was one of those shows that was always on, like, the bubble. But mm-hmm. Fox actually let it like finish normally, which was really odd because Fox is one of those networks that always just like, eh, fuck it, we don't care yeah. about this show. But they let it go through five seasons and like they actually did like a full story. So, I see. Yeah, that was really good. And what was that game with Lance Riddick that was on Xbox One that was pretty decent? Mm. Where he had like the superpowers and like I think Iceman is the main character. I can't even think that actor's name. Iceman. I'm trying to mm. think. Quantum... Quantum, Quantum break. break? Yes. Oh. oh, yeah, I remember now. He was in that. Mm-hmm. He's in the TV show. That was a TV show, show. yeah, that was right? a TV show, too, yeah. Yeah, because I remember the big thing with that game was, like, like we could stream the cutscenes or you could download them. And it was, like, yeah. some stupid amount of, like, 30 gigabytes. Um, when people got that out of shape about that, yeah. Um, no, he's he's a great actor. I said, I'm hoping it'll be payoff for Resident Evil, but there's nothing that I've seen so far in the first episode or online that makes me think otherwise. Mm. Yeah. So maybe update if I ever get to it. Um, and then the last thing to talk about is Bioshock. I finished the rest of the Bioshock stuff. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I finished Infinite, and I I know you weren't here for the beginning of Infinite stuff last week, Nick, but yeah, I really enjoyed going back through Infinite. Uh, but I would say Brandon, I guess like where we left off last week. I think yeah, I was, like, yeah. Somewhere like maybe like halfway to two thirds, and I'm like, oh, I love the g- Infinite gameplay. It's so much fun. I'm like, the story's starting to get to that weird place though. Yeah. Uh, where I told you it gets way too Michael Bay. Is that the, is that your first time playing Infinite by chance? No, 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 no. no. Okay, I was just I, out, out of curiosity. Yeah, no, I played it before when it came out. Um, and I like I remember like bits and pieces of it. Like I knew like some of the big story beats and like kind of the takeaway that me and Brandon kind of came up with last week was we think that infinite story would have held up better if they just didn't do the multiverse thing and just kind of stuck with the same story from beginning to end. Uh, uh-huh. and just kind of let that story play out the way that it looked like it was supposed to play out. Uh-huh. Um, instead of being like warping back and forth and killing people in like different dimensions and fucking things up across like 10 different timelines to finally get to an ending that just sucks. Um, yeah so it's just they, they were trying too hard to like take too many just like stances on things that none of them are really that strong um so that was kind of my take of it but you know I, I do think the gameplay just does kind of start to fall apart in like maybe the last third because i didn't remember the stupid like ghost bullshit i completely blacked that out of my memory and it was just so annoying. oh yeah um that was just kind of dumb. There was just some like grindy bits at the end that just didn't make any sense. I told um, you it was about to get really bad. But up to that point, it was really good. Yeah. No, I don't um, disagree. And I, I told you I didn't disagree with you then, did I? I said I actually thought it was a good game until like that ending, like that last half of the game. I guess the last one third of the game is just like, it's kind of shit. Yeah, it's just, I guess I just, go, go, I go, just, go, 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 and it's just not. But it wasn't even fun. like the Michael Bay East stuff. It was just kind of like they they strayed too much from the gameplay that they already paid mm-hmm. to like throw in this other stuff that just felt out of place. Um, like I said, the ghost thing, like you didn't really fight anything like that before. It wasn't even really a boss. It was just annoying. Uh, like those kind of things. Just I just I just wasn't really digging it. You do have like. Then you kind of get into like kind of stealthish segments all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it really changes kind of like the run and gun like plasmid like gameplay. And just kind of yeah, just, that game does not complement stealth gameplay. No, yeah, it doesn't have good pacing too, either. Like yeah. it's fine at the beginning, and then it just goes off the rails. Yeah, its pacing is just like what the fuck are you even doing? Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I still love Columbia. I still kind of like the stuff that they set up there, but. It just wasn't it. And then so then I did get through both parts of Burial at Sea, mm-hmm. along with that as well. And uh, I really forgot a lot of Burial at Sea stuff too. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I did not remember that part two of Burial at Sea is entirely stealth. Like, oh, oh, I yeah. didn't remember that either. Yep. I, I never played the DLC. So, yeah. So, surprise. It oh, is shit. entirely stealth from beginning to end. And I'm going to hate, I'm going to hate half of it then. Yeah, so part one, you'll be fine. Part two, you will be there. I mean, the story, I think, does wrap up well. Um, I think it does do a good job of, like, tying together the series. And I didn't remember it feeling that way last time I played it. But I think it's because I played Bioshock Infinite so far removed from the last time I played Bioshock Mm -hmm. Uh when I played it. So I just, you know, I just didn't remember a lot of the stuff as I was going through it. But I think it does do a good job of tying that stuff up. And with Infinite, too, because I even played it... Because I played the DLC when it came out, and it came out, like, probably a year after, like, Infinite did. Um, so even the elements there that it kind of tied up into the story, I think, were pretty nice. Uh, I, as you guys know, I'm not a fun of stealth gameplay, so some of it just kind of frustrated me, and I just kind of ran through some areas, uh-huh. which I was fine with. I was just like, whatever, it didn't matter. It, it's... Because the game's mostly stealth, it's not like you really have to explore unless you want to get some more of the, like, audio tapes or whatever. I was just like, I want to get the fuck out of this area and just on somewhere that's not as annoying. So, you do that. The story, there is, I'm because I know you're going to play it, so I'm not really going to spoil it, Nick. Thank you. Uh, but, like, the story aspect of it, one part of it, like, particularly the end of part one of Burial at Sea is kind of, how do I put this? They try to do a twist. And I think they pull it off. Okay. But there's one part of it that just doesn't make any sense to me. 
okay. just like thinking of from a logical standpoint. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm just telling you that so that when you when we talk about this, when you actually do play it, you'll be able to be like, give me some feedback on what you thought about it too. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, that's it. I mean, unless you had any questions on it, like I said, I don't want to spoil yeah. anything. Cause, yeah. No. I mean, that's. I I legit have not seen anything about this DLC at like ever. Like I know it was announced, I know it came out, and then like nothing. Um, so yeah, I think like I said, I think if you're running through them like I did, where I just went like from like one to end, like I think you'll appreciate it a lot more because I I did like the the Rapture like throwbacks uh-huh. that they did have um in the story, and I like the kind of way that they did pull things back and forth between the two. Um, I think you can see the writing on the wall and the ending, kind of. Um, I don't know. I think I think they do an okay job of pulling off the twist at very old C. Uh-huh. Um, like the, I mean, it's not really a twist. Like I, I don't know how to put it. Like you know where it's headed, but you don't really know where it's headed. But you don't really want it to go where it's headed. You'll see. I, you'll see what I mean. I think they do a good job with it, though. Okay. I think I think you'll have a fun ride through it. But yeah, I don't know. That's. That's my final thoughts on Bioshock. Unless they okay. make another Bioshock game. Which they are. Game. But someday. Apparently, yeah. Supposedly. Yeah. We haven't seen Eventually. it yet, but it's, it's coming. Yeah. Antarctica Bioshock. I hope so. Antarctica. So. I hope it's like the thing. That's what I w- imagine in my mind. Ooh, like, that would be like amazing. Yeah. Like what? Like the, the thing. thing? What do you mean? The, the, the movie. The movie, The Thing. Jarn Carpenter's oh. The Thing. Oh, I've never seen it. It is legitimately one of the best movies ever made. You should see it. I agree. I actually I think it's an excellent movie. It is it is absolutely in my top five horror movies of all time. And it kind of surpasses horror movies, like a hundred and ten percent. It's just a fucking excellent movie. Interesting. Yeah. Um And it has the oh god, what what's his name? He's like so well known in like those sort of movies. No, 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 no. The the guy, the main character. No, I don't remember. I forgot. Um, uh, the thing. Why can't I think of his fucking name right now? It's Kurt Russell. That's oh. it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, Kurt. Yeah. yeah, Kurt Russell's great. Yeah, he's the main character in the thing. He's really fucking good. Um. Yeah. No. I, it's excellent. I do recommend it. So. Hell yeah. Um. But I don't know. I don't know if you have any because I know you've been playing more of the. The Bioshock stuff. Like, I don't know what you have. Uh, did you want me to go into my stuff? Since yeah, you know, go you're just talking it, about man. Bioshock? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, I beat Bioshock 1, and I mm-hmm. started Bioshock 2. Yeah, um, yeah. I completely forgot how much of a difficulty uptick that one takes at that final stretch of the game. Yep, yeah. you can even softlock yourself. Yep, I did not do that. Um, Very lucky. I actually had that happen. The first time I streamed in, I was like, great. Also, I forgot how dog shit it was when you are assembling the big daddy components and you put the helmet on. And then there's that weird, like, I don't even call it a fish eye, but like, they're like, oh, look, you have a, a thing in front of your face. Yeah, and, like, the you UI thing. Your you're like, I can't see fucking dick. I was like, I, I was like, I wish I put the helmet on last. And then yeah. it was the first thing I got. I was like, fuck. Yeah. I was like, can I take this off, please? Um, But yeah, no, I, I, like I said, I forgot how the bad the difficulty what uptick was um in that um but i overall i remember enjoying it just about the same as i did when i first played it like so long ago um trying to think if i don't i'm going to find anything new i really didn't play it like listening to any of the story that much again because i like i've like i've played that so many times at this point that like i already know like what the fucking the story is i'm actually going to pay closer attention to Two, because I think I've only played Bioshock two once, I believe. Um, oh, two had a pretty decent story. Played through it again. I yeah. mean, I I paid a lot more attention. I think to both stories this time. I mean, I knew how they both. Well, the first one, I definitely like. I feel like the first one's just such a classic, like, yeah, game story. Now, like you, you most people know what that one is. Uh, two though is kind of like I'm like refresh my memory, so I kind of had to go back through and yeah. like, pay a lot more attention with that one. Um, I think it plays out well. Are you planning on playing Minerva's Den too? Uh, and... yes. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I I offered my thoughts on that one last week too, and I I think it's worth it. I think it's just it's a great little standalone. Yes. Bioshock piece. I think you'll have a great time with that as well. I remember I did play that DLC when it came out. Um, yeah. Because I actually remember when Bioshock Two came out, and mm-hmm. I think 
I, I, I know I wanted the record edition. I don't know if I got the edition that came with like the soundtrack on the record. Um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Um, but yeah, so I finished that the other day, and then immediately, like, let me just boot up Bioshock Two and just get that started. And like, you can definitely feel like you're talking about like the M- Michael Bayish stuff with Infinite, uh, and like I feel like you can instantly feel that with Two because like oh, right yeah. away they're doing like explosions and like you're flying then you're, like, you're going through like fucking elevator shafts and shit and like there's a lot more um like set pieces i guess you would call them yes definitely um and i also uh completely like i was so hyped up to have dual wielding from <laughs> after playing bioshock when i was like i hate having to be like Left arm, right arm, left arm, right arm. I'm like, zap, shoot, this is great. Love this. Um, I forgot how much I hated collecting little sisters in this game. Yep. Because it wasn't just like, oh, you rescue them or you harvest them. Like, no, they have to fucking poke a dead body for like five minutes and you got to hope they don't get attacked by splicers. Oh, no, they all get attacked. It's yeah, yeah. Hope. Like, they all get attacked. Yeah. yeah. It just, it's how much time you want to fuck around with that. Um, I do like the hacking component in 2 better than 1, though. Oh, yeah. No, it's much better. Um, and I like it not because it's it's going from the pipe game to, like, that, like, radio frequency thing, almost. Although, mm-hmm. I do like that one better just in general, because there were so many times where I was doing the pipe game one, and I'd fuck myself, because like, if you didn't change that first tile right away, you were just done. Yep, fucked. Yeah. And you, um, but you never would realize it in time. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, it's impossible. Because like, it's you, like you the one to... five tiles away is the one that blocks you in, and you're like, nope, never. Yeah, and you had to be like, oh, wait, I was supposed to change that one? Ah, uh, shit, fuck. Um, so I do like the the second one's version of doing it better. I like the remote hack darts a lot as well. Uh, but I think my fa- most favorite thing about it is um, being able to get, like, little goodies if you hit the blue shit yeah so like getting free med kits getting free ammo turrets and shit that do more more damage so like big big fan of that um but i think i got as far as killing my first big sister and or whatever they call it what they call big sisters or yeah what, big sisters. yeah and i got incinerate um and then i guess i called it after that, because, like, I literally went from playing Bioshock 2, right, or 1, right into Bioshock 2. I was like, let me just take a little bit of a fiver here. Um, yeah, get yourself reacquainted. Yes. The other, the other thing with the Harvesting Little Sisters 2, that's just kind of, like, it, it's one thing that, I mean, I don't think it ended up being, like, too much of it. It was only an issue at certain points of the game, because I, I, the one thing is, like, I feel like there's a lot of points where if you die in Bioshock, it's not terribly punishing. No, I just send you back to where you are and you go. But if you die, like, like let's say you die like near the end of a little sister harvest, like, and you go back, she has to start over from the beginning, and all the splicers come back too. It's not like the ones that you killed aren't going to come back. So it does if you do like fuck up like during one of those, like you end up just losing a shit ton of ammo. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of frustrating. I think that I just ended up being like, I'm just going to make sure I'm just well stocked on health packs because it's better money spent to just waste health if I have to than to yep. like lose all the ammo and time just fucking yeah. around with this little sister. So And typically what I like to do as well is like I like to try and save every single one. So like before I finished Bioshock 1, I went back and got every single little sister. Oh yeah, same. But like I, I, just a much yeah. easier experience because like, like all right, cool, RPGs fuck them up, and there we go, done. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, so, uh, after pl- replaying all three of them, though, Mike, what's your favorite one, you think, that you've replayed? Um, I think it's one. I think yeah. one is... One's the best game. Like, it's as simple as that. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, my, my complaints do stand. I If I had, like, choose gameplay with, like, one's, like, setting and story, like, I think oh, yeah. the, the definitive, like, Bioshock game. Um, and if we're like splitting hairs in like categories, like I'd probably be like, well, you know, like best story would probably be like one, and the like best gameplay would probably be either two or infinite because I, I do like, I do really like how infinite's gameplay 
plays. Which yeah, is the gameplay is really good in Infinite. I think the you're right about best story being in one. I also think one has the best pacing. One yes. has very good, like from story aspects, really good pacing, and like mm-hmm. I remember when I first played it, being just heavily invested into it because it's like you feel the betrayal, you feel like the urgency, and like it's just your your morbid curiosity of wanting to know more about like Rapture and it, everything. It drives you to explore the world, yes. and then it really, really brings the whole thing together and makes it feel very. Um, unique and like you're actually going on some kind of like big spooky adventure yes yeah and it was always and the other thing is too is always rewarding when you did explore Mm -hmm. um i feel like bioshock one and two actually both did a really good job of rewarding when you explore bioshock three or infinite um I don't. It's not really feel much like... off the beaten path. You got like those song things where they like change up music to be like sound like it's from a different era and everything. But other than that, exploring doesn't really lead you to much in Infinite. There is so you do. There are a couple like side quests you kind of run into where it'll be like find the chest for this key. But like the problem is like even when I did those things, like the payoff was like nominal at best, and I was like, mm-hmm. was it really worth it? Even some yeah. of the chests, like um, safes that you would find, they'd be like, "This safe takes five lock picks to open." So I'm like, oh, "Okay, you know, I got enough lock picks, whatever." Go to town, Elizabeth, and they open, and they're like, "Here's two hundred dollars." Yeah, like, that was a the the rewards like time. nothing, honestly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, that was kind of disappointing, but I don't ever feel like it was the case for one or two. Like I feel like if you found that secret ship, not really secret. I mean, it's just there. Like if you took the time to explore and kind of found those areas off the beaten path. Like they'd be like, oh, here's here's a pretty nice reward for you for doing or this. or the reward is just like you quite literally have more knowledge now of the world itself because it leads you to something that gives you information about the world that you didn't know about before. And it's like, oh, that's cool. So yeah. like you want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, And I did one thing I do like with two, too, is I feel like it, it values your time quite a bit mm-hmm. better with some of the stuff where it'd be like. Because it'd be like, oh, you know, I don't know what the passcode is for this. It's hidden somewhere in this area. And that is annoying. But the nice thing is, like, if if you go to the area where it's supposed to be and you, like, reasonably probably found yeah. it, it gives you the code. Like, you, like it's, 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 literally, like it's held at the top right corner or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you're even if you, like, inadvertently miss it, you didn't really miss it. Which is so, fine because when I was replaying the first one, I was just googling codes for things most of the time. Yeah, like, yeah I just, what's the code for this thing? All right, cool. I'm, like, I'm not looking around for this shit. Like, no. just open it for me. Yeah, no, I agree. I, but like I said, I, I do like I do like that they did kind of add those things in there. But like I said, if it just kind of it's a large empty world yeah. in some ways, um, and just some of the the story stuff. Like, like there's another thing we talked about with Brandon last week too. Like there's there's a lot of lore in Infinite. That clearly was not put into the game. Like uh-huh. they just because of the way the story progressed, like they really did flesh out. Like, like what was her name? I already forgot it again. Like Daisy Fitzroy, um, like that kind of like anarchist leader. Like you get like a a, a a small segment of the game is devoted to her, but it never really fleshes her out mm-hmm. really well. Even things like um, uh, Comstock's wife. Who's pretty integral to the story? Like they never really flesh her out really well. Yeah. Uh, and, and and I think it's even more odd considering like what the actual ending of that game is. Like she should be a very integral character for you to understand, but you just never really get that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like on the flip side, of Bioshock one and two, like those things are all there if you just want to take the time and look for it. So. Yeah, no, I agree. But um, I, I definitely, I feel like I'm gonna have the same opinion as you. Is like when I, re- like when I finish all of them again, like I think one's gonna be my favorite, just because it's in terms of what it does, it does it the best. Yeah. So but it's we'll see. it's the best overall package of the three. Yeah, but we we shall we shall see. I just started to actually yesterday, so. I mean, if, if you're considering like Minerva's Den as like a standalone story. That one might be like near the top. Yeah. Um, I think Minerva's Den has like a stronger story than two does on its own. Okay. Um and it's it's got a pretty tight game. Yeah. So um 
honestly, I almost think Minerva's Den would have worked better. Like, if you fleshed out that into a bigger game, probably would have made a more compelling story than Bioshock 2. Um, but yeah, no, you'll see when you get when you get to that part. Like I said, I think it I think it plays really well. I think it it builds its stuff really well. I think it does some interesting things with its mechanics. It adds some new things that aren't in the main game, which I think are pretty cool. Um, and I just I think it was just a really well done, tight Bioshock experience. Very old see if I was going to consider that separate. Probably stronger than Bioshock Infinite, but but very old see now that I've played it like everything back to back, like it it. it feels like it's built to be an epilogue to Bioshock Infinite and should be played right after Bioshock Infinite. So mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. And yeah. it should once you actually play it. So I got you. But uh but yeah so I finished up Bioshock one this week and started Bioshock two. Um I'm gonna do my middle thing last. I should probably should have reordered these better. But that's fine. Um the Pokemon TCG Mm-hmm. Uh, last week released, I think it was last week or two weeks ago at this point, um, there is card packs now based off of Pokemon Go. Mm-hmm. And they're fucking awesome. Uh, yeah. There's like a lot of like art and whatnot that like uh, showcases shit from the obviously Pokemon Go the game. And uh, the artworks is really cool. Um, there's a lot of cool new Pokemon that they've added to the TCG, like the Radiant versions of Pokemon. Um, but I just... Like, as, as far as, like, sets goes, this is one of my favorite sets that they put out in a while because I feel like a lot of the sets have been just kind of lacking. And Can we talk like, about the these... Dittos? Oh, the Dittos? The Dittos <laughs> yeah. are great. I'll have to so, get there. So, Mike, I'm so sorry. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I no, just, my brain went back to that because my friend showed me one because I fucking love Bidoof. You know how much I love yes. Bidoof. Big Bidoof and guy. And he showed me the Bidoof Ditto, and I was like, that's fucking amazing. So in the Pokemon Go TCG pack set, um, there's Ditto cards, and the only d- cards that that can be Ditto's are Bidoofs. And there's there's uh, oh, I think there's one other that can. Uh, from I, what thought, I, was I, th- I thought it was a strictly Bidoof. That's all I've ever seen anyway. Uh, uh, and it, Ditto, I'll, I'll check this. I'll, okay. I'll fact check it. Go and it. if you look at the bottom left corner of the card, with like all the symbols and stuff that indicate what set it's from, mm-hmm. um, there there could be a little picture of a Ditto there. And if there is, the card has a sticker on it. You peel that sticker off, and behind it is a ditto. Yep. Like an actual ditto card. So it's literally hiding behind the card that you have. Yes. And it's, like, really fucking cool. I think it's cool. I think it's awesome. It looks pretty neat. Yeah. Um, So, but I bought a couple of the packs now for it. There was an Executor V box that had came out um, for the Pokemon Go stuff, as well as a Radiant Eevee box that came out. and all of it has seemed to be stocked up pretty well. Like I have yet to go into one of my normal haunts where I buy cards from, and like they haven't had at least one or both of the things. So, like, there was that time period where like it was really hard to buy anything for MSRP and like anything at all. Um, that seems to be very much so over at this point because uh, no matter where I go, I can find what I'm looking for, which is mm-hmm. very convenient because like. It was annoying trying to find things to build decks and whatnot, but uh, we're good now. But yeah, definitely check that. Like, I know like you and Katie like collecting Pokemon yeah, cards just it. for like the artwork and whatnot. Like, I do. I cannot recommend the Pokemon Go set enough because like the arts I... is really cool, and like it has to me like some of the cards feel like um they've come so out they of like the sell Tech these in solo packs yet because last they... time I saw they only had boxes like the big forty eight. 50 60 dollar fucking boxes so like, they do not but the cheapest thing uh, you can get would be the uh radiant executor box or not radiant but the executor box which i believe is like 20 bucks okay that's not bad that's not terrible uh might have to look into that. executor v is 20 dollars. yeah okay. so because otherwise that's... you'd be buying the, the etb which is like 50 mm-hmm. and the executor box has four card packs so i mean Figure for twenty bucks, you get four card packs: an Lolan Executor V, um, and the big Executor V. So I really want the card. an unpeeled Badoof Ditto. That's that's I, what I need. To give you an idea, I I've asked my friends. So me and my friends have all been buying this shit up, and mm-hmm. nobody in my friend group, including myself, has found one. I got to double check because I might have like passed one by accident. Mm-hmm. But I haven't even pulled any Bidoofs. Like, I'm checking specifically the Bidoofs. Mm-hmm. But I've pulled, like, Bi-Barrel. I haven't pulled Bidoof. 
So yeah, I think it's like only Badoof. Two or three I think you were right about there. that. So I just wanted to tell you that you are right oh, about yeah. that. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's a really cool set, and like if you can, like at least get the box because I think you guys yeah. enjoy opening the packs. So absolutely. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is just a thing that I did a couple weekends ago. Um, in New Jersey, there's a gaming convention called EGCX, East Coast Gamer Convention, or East Coast Gamer or something, or whatever, whatever. Um, and I was helping out with a Smash tournament there. Uh, I was offering my company's services. And, mm-hmm. uh, Brandon, you're going to find this cool in particular. Um, there was a certain musical act that was performing at East EGCX. Mm-hmm. Anamanaguchi. Oh, that sounds sick. Uh, two of the guys played in the tournament, and I met them, and I talked to them. That's so cool. <laughs> and I was like, I was brought, like helping the guy run it, and he was like, oh, yeah, so-and-so and so-and-so from Anamana Gucci are going to be playing in the tournament today. And I was like, are you, when the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> and, uh, no, they were just, like, they were super cool dudes, like, exactly what you would expect. I just recently learned that they're actually, like, local. Like, they're from, like, Anamana oh, Gucci's cool. from New York City. So, like they seem to know a lot of the local players and whatnot. And then whenever they, they go touring to a city, they look for whatever smash locals are happening and just sign up and start playing. That's so neat. So like, it is really cool. Yeah. But I was like, I can't wait to tell Brandon that I fucking saw. Yeah. That's amazing. Dude from Happy for you. Very <laughs> happy for you. That's sick. So, um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much what I've been up to more or less. Um, I did watch, I or it's not watch. I started the demo for Live Alive or Live Alive, whatever the fuck you want to call it, but I haven't played nice. it enough to really give a solid, uh, uh, you know, opinion. So yeah, I do. I like what I've played, but I can't tell you why I've liked what I played because I'm just like this is just it's cool. Yeah, RPG, no time JRP- to like sit down and yeah, like, like mm. it's cool JRPG bullshit, and it's like in my alley JRPG bullshit, but like I can't yeah. like break it down for you. So right, so I don't bring it. Both downloaded it. We think we talked about it last week, but neither of us actually started it. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Same. I haven't, still haven't started it. So, but yeah, uh, Brandon, you can take it away. Yeah. Um. So you said you were curious about Neon White. Neon White's pretty much the yeah. only thing I played this week. I was dunking on it because, like, as soon as they showed it off, they were like playing cards, and I was like, "Ha, Kingdom Hearts: Chain of Memories." But uh, all right. Yeah. Let me let me go ahead and set that aside for a second uh i don't even rec- realize that this game is a card game anymore at, when playing it so that that should just give you a general idea there uh essentially the card aspect of this only works in a very specific way um it's to make it so you can only use three of a certain ability and two abilities at a time more yeah. or less so it's more like a puzzle game uh, that's a speedrunner's fucking dream. Okay. Uh, this game is very, very speedrun heavy to the point where, in order to like progress, you actually have to get like medals based on times. Uh, and you the the better time you get, the better medal you'll end up getting. And like you'll get either a silver, a gold, or an ace medal. I think you can get bronze also, but I've never seen that. Uh, anyway, um, the ace medal is like the best of the best. And it seems like every single stage you play in this game, there is a specific way you can do it. And there's so many different ways you can do it like outside the box when you like learn more about the mechanics of the game. So when you just fire with the trigger like you're firing a gun normally, it fires... Your gun, whatever gun that may be. So, like, yellow cards are pistols. Uh, I believe green cards are SMGs. Uh, there's different cards for, like, a, a, a rifle and and a, um, a bow and this, that, and the other. And uh, that's cool and all. But then there's other aspects of it, which is called discarding, where you actually discard the card in question. And when you discard it, you bring into effect its special ability. So you discard a green card or an SMG card, and you have a ground pound ability now. Okay. So say you're jumping out of a building and you're falling to the ground, and you happen to have a green card. You discard that. Now you're falling at a much faster pace, and you can land on the enemies below if there are any below you and kill them instantly when you like ground pound and land at the bottom. And that sort of deal. And um, then if you discard um, uh, pistols, 
you get a double jump. So, like, you jump normally, and then you have a pistol card, and you discard it, and then you do another jump once you discard it. So what you can do is you can chain together um, jumps. Like, you can jump into a pistol card, discard it instantly, jump to another one, discard it instantly, and keep yourself in the air doing, like, chain jumps without ever touching the ground and that sort of deal, if there's enough there. And there's a few stages that have been designed that way, and they're super fucking cool. But I'm, like, getting super ahead of myself, so I'm going to kind of, like, take a step back and at least explain what this game is about without spoiling a lot. So um, the reason why this game is called Neon White is because um, sinners who have died and are kind of trapped between heaven and hell are called Neons. And the Neons are given a chance every few years when it's the season for demons to be running amok, they end up breaking into heaven, the demons do. And the Neons are hired from hell, or from in between heaven and hell, to uh, take out the demons. So essentially, you're competing with every other Neon in existence to win your ability to be in heaven. Mm Mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of people are just like, I don't give a sh- I don't really give a shit. But then they, like, try to entice you with their heavenly delights, as they call them. Uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a very minor spoiler. One of the heavenly delights was the ability to watch any movie I wanted that was in the heavenly library. And, uh, the main character, which is Neon White, because they all have code names, um, <laughs> he found the Matrix. <laughs> and sat down and watched it with angels. <laughs> it was really fucking funny. A lot of the dialogue and a lot of the humor of this is super cringy. Uh, there is like a absolute like I I I can only assume this girl is a Yandere, which is like a girl that mm-hmm. is obsessed with someone to the point of harming themselves or someone else. Um, she says. One of the most real and also disturbing lines I've ever heard in a video game, which made me be like, this is like super cringy, but also it's super real. So your character has just gone through like uh, one of the trials, which is uh, the trials are the stages I was telling you about where you discard cards or you use cards to defeat demons and then get to the end of the thing and a certain amount of time, that sort of deal. And they're like broken up into small little challenges that you can complete in like less than a minute. But the element of increasing your like decreasing your time, it takes you to get there, finding new routes to get from point A to point B the fastest. And like getting those medals as well as presents that you can give to other characters in the game, all of that is what stacks up to the game's like ten to fourteen hour gameplay, uh, that like length. But yeah. the line that <laughs> that was said was after going through like a trial of like ten of those back to back, your guys like huffing and puffing, and then like the girl, the Yandere girl, she's like. Yeah, you should try having big boobs. The sweat really, like, chafes you raw. It's awful. And it's just like, dude, really? We're gonna have an actual dialogue where we're talking about chafing boobs due to them sweating from her having to, like, (laughs) fight all these demons and shit? And it's just like, come on. And and, um, I think... The I, I did a stream in this game, and I think I best summed it up with this game is absolutely fantastic, but written by a 14-year-old. And that's how I feel like this game is. Mm-hmm. It is written by a very edgy Newgrounds 14-year-old who just wants to add so much like cool shit or weird fan y shit or what have you to the game. But the actual gameplay that's there is so fucking good that you can overlook all of that, more or less. So you have really weird conversations. You have really weird dialogue, like a guy that constantly calls you bro. Uh, like there's like things where you're like talking to an angel. <laughs> oh, my God. No, no. You know what? No, no. This was. This was the best line that actually made me laugh legitimately out loud. Uh, So the angels in this game look like cartoon cats to you because you can't fathom their actual, like, form. You can't 
understand what they actually look like. So, like, you ask at one point, why do you look like a talking cartoon cat? And they're like, this is ridiculous. It, whatever it be, cartoon cats or... Or, um, and he, like, goes on a list of bunch, and he's like, we're a sexy Statue of Liberty. You humans are all the same. You can't fathom our actual form, so you just make up uh, something for, that your brain can associate with us that makes it easier for you to comp- comprehend what we look like. And then the one of your teammates comes busting in. He's like, dude, can you fucking believe John Cena's giving us missions in heaven? This shit's <laughs> rad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's it's so silly. It's so poorly written, but in like the best kind of cheesy way that's actually hilarious. And then the actual gameplay to top it all off is just it's phenomenal. It is really good. So um I honestly can't recommend this game enough. This is maybe my second or third favorite game that I've played this year. It is really fucking good. I highly recommend checking it out. Like, legitimately do so. And Nick, the main character, is voiced by Steve Blum. And he's just, he's just, he's just Steve Blum. So, so imagine Steve Blum going through all of this and, uh, or, or fucking Spike from Cowboy Bebop, or Tom mm-hmm. from Toonami, or whatever. That voice, that man, is the one that's going through all this. But, like, you know, you kind of got the, like, the generic elements where he's like, oh, I don't remember anything, I have amnesia. And then they're like, oh, okay. And But um, they kind of play with that a bit, because these people don't really tell you who they are, and they kind of hold their cards like close to their chest on mm-hmm. who they are and your relationship to them. So as you're playing the game, you learn more about your character and your relationship with the other characters that you are um, competing with in heaven at the time. So um, that's like super cool to me. And there's like little things that are dropped here and there. Like uh, this happens in the second chapter and there's like 10 chapters. So fuck it. I'm going to tell this element. Um, You find out in the second chapter that you actually don't get to stay in heaven. If you win their demon killing games, you actually have to compete with everyone every year to be allowed to stay in heaven. So then it becomes like a battle Royale, but you're like competing with each other in defeating the most demons in the fastest amount of time in order Mm. to stay in heaven. So like the person that won last year, he's there and he has like a halo that allows him to stay in heaven and not go back to hell or not be sent to hell. And you realize that these people now that they've gotten like a taste of it in the past, they don't want to let go of it. So they're going to do everything in their power to remain there and not have to deal with going back to where they came from. So the like competition gets like, you know, tougher and tougher as you move on in the game, because the people that you're competing against actually have had like a taste of being up there in that plane of existence. And they're like, I don't want to let that go. So then like some, there's like backstabbing and crazy shit that starts happening. And it's, it's really, really good, but Mm. it's really, really cheesy. But the gameplay is so good that it doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. I I highly recommend it. Also, uh, if you know of a little band by the name of Machine Girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The entire soundtrack is made by them. Hell yeah. So many people call this uh, a Machine Girl album that also happens to have a video game with it. So there's that as well. So there you go. It's two thumbs up. Great game. 10 out of 10 would buy again? Um, Maybe. I bought it on my Steam Deck. I mean, I bought it on Steam. That way I could have it on my Steam Deck. But yeah. this is also on Switch. So um, if like anyone wanted to play this on the go, which I would, I, I think this game is perfect for like pick up and play because of those little bite-sized chunks of like stages where it's like it takes a minute here it takes two minutes here and the entire point of it is like perfecting your route more so than you know having very long levels you have shorter levels but a lot of them and a lot to do and a reason to keep coming back to those levels and like increase I mean, decrease your time and get better and better and better. And that really lends itself perfectly to like a handheld, um, you know, format. And that's why I think it's great that it released on 
both Steam and the Steam Deck exist, and Switch. So, yeah. there you go. Not your jam. Uh, is that all you've been playing? Yeah, that's all I've been playing. All right. You guys ready to move on to news? Mm-hmm. So much. Just paying it a three was officially announced. Yeah. 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 So th- th- you can, we can also do the No More Heroes thing because you, you know, I may have fought with you before we went live and everything about that, but uh, um, turns out they had just given a month before, not an actual date. So, so you guys uh, were right about that. I was being belligerent and an asshole for no reason. <laughs> it's just because you were probably like you just woke up and you did hangry. just wake up, and I, yeah, I'm, just I was up, very nap, hungry. Nap and didn't have any snacks and nappy juice. I mean, I had been awake for 36 hours before that nice hour and a half nap. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta give it to me at least. Yeah. So it's just a little bit, please. Yeah, of course. Uh, but yeah, so much rumored being at a three release date was right. October 28th. So Nintendo's got themselves a fat October now too. Uh, between, yeah. the, between third party and out Bayonetta. Uh, yeah. I mean, the trailer looks really good. I don't know if you guys watched, uh, no, I mean it's not that like if you if you played Bayonetta before, prize Bayonetta. Like I don't think there's anything that there in that trailer that was like, oh my god, I can't believe that this is happening. But I think it's it kind is. of the case that it is actually happening. Yeah, it is. I actually can't believe happening. it's actually happening. And it's got a release date, and they stuck it in October, which kind of. I mean, I'm not surprised, but I'm kind of surprised because mm-hmm. um, it's not like they didn't they didn't have any first party announcements for October. But on the flip side, Mario Rabbits was there, and just like I said, a fat stack of third-party games were also there. So I'm surprised they're like, oh, you know, let's do it. But it's a nice Halloween game, I guess. You play as a witch. Uh, mm-hmm. Interestingly, this also has like a like a safe viewing mode, I guess. Yes, you're worried about. Yeah, people you were mentioning about that. That it exists. Yeah. I mean, if people want the option, who fucking cares? People are like, oh, rah rah censorship. I'm like, that's not censorship. It's just an option. Yeah, but that's yeah, exactly. It'd be like if you can, if it's not there, that's censorship. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If, it was, if it was the only option, that would yeah. be censorship. Yes. But I think giving the option that's like that's a good compromise. Yeah. In, in general, like you yeah. want to play the game the way you want to play the game. Cool. But if someone else doesn't want to play the game that way, then they also have the option for that. And it's like, okay, cool. Someone's very afraid of titties, so you just need to give them the option <laughs> to hide them. Someone's afraid of titties. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, I mean, I could totally understand why people would want it either way. Whatever floats your boat, it's nice that they have the option. Honestly, I, I think it's it's pretty inclusive thing to do. I'm actually surprised yeah, I, that I we've actually really agree with seen you. this before, really. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not that common at all. This is so. very forward thinking and not a way of alienating your original audience. And I think this is totally fair. Yeah. Which uh, is weird because I'm the kind of person that would normally fight shit to the nails if it was mm-hmm. actually like, you know, bullshit. But I, I mean, I see no reason to not have something like this. Yeah. I, mean, I guess you could be like, oh, an extra, uh, you know, it took extra time for them to make it or whatever. But I, I can't imagine that I being it. that yeah, much I more, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't imagine the time for it was ridiculous either. It's just mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, you just got to have like, you know, just re- do a little bit of reskinning with like the animations are probably going to stay the same. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and, and honestly, I would much rather have something like this where a person has the option over like them being like, yeah, no, uh, we're just going to make this the default. Like that's that's what that's the thing that would make me upset. Like we said before. Yeah, like exactly. If, if that was the only way you could play it, it'd be like, no, nah, that's just that's just shit. But I, I will say this. Uh, if we start seeing these options more on things like this, and these games also start having a release on, like, Sony products, I'm going to be like, well, at least we know now why it was being done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I actually just kind of ring wrangle this in there, too, because there's that note from, we were talking about Lollipop Chainsaw last week. Mm-hmm. Last week or two weeks ago, I can't remember. But I think two the, weeks ago. Yeah, because if Nick was there, that and I think he was, then it was two weeks. I was, ago. yeah. Uh, but there's that note from the director that's like, "Hey guys, there's some misinformation going around." Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not planning on changing the graphics for this game. You know, we're just yeah. gonna like polish it up, but we're not mm-hmm. fundamentally changing it. Yes, we are losing some of the music tracks, unfortunately, because they're licensed. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the last thing they had was the censorship. Like, we're not planning on censoring this thing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know you pointed out that they weren't really committing to it, but I, you know, my kind of like vague point was, you know, like I think that's just them saying that like when Sony asks them to censor it on their system, they're going to do it because they don't want to lose the platform. Um, but I, I don't think it's necessarily going to mean they're going to do it for everything. Yeah. I feel like that's been something that we've kind of seen happen more recently with some other games too. So mm-hmm. I, I think that it will just kind of a little bit that note maybe feel a little bit better. Yeah, about yeah, I, I got a little bit. I felt a little bit better as well. I still uh, have to wait and see what happens, but I, I do think that. I mean, I'm not saying that the licensed music will make or break the game for me, but I do think if they just do like really fucking shitty music, it could. So yeah, we'll it's just do MIDI versions of the songs they couldn't get. I'm gonna be honest. I would be a okay with that. It would be funny and on brand. Yeah, that's what I'm just saying. It'd be. Just get like a not super poorly done MIDI, but like you know somebody's first tar- time putting together. <laughs> yes, and it's just like yeah. all right, cool. <laughs> Better if they do like the old. Remember, like in the early two thousands of YouTube, you'd be like, "This is the chipmunk version of this song." <laughs> Skirts copyright. I guess that's a good point too, because they could go like for more like covers or something too. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be. Horrible. I don't think that would be terrible if they did, like, an actual good cover of something, you know? Yeah. Um, not just, like, my first YouTube video cover, mm-hmm. but, like, you know, if you got something decent. But I mean, if you take out, like, Mickey and then you sub it with something that just doesn't match that energy, um, that would just be devastating. So, because I, I don't know, that like, if there's anything that I associate with that game, it's Dead boyfriends had attached to your waist like a trinket that like topped and stuff. And Mickey, when you get like your like super special thing planned, like those are the two things that that that's famous to me. So I mean, it's a lot of fun, crazy story. But, like, yeah, yeah, I feel like the hey Mickey, that element of it is like very ingrained in its actual personality. To the point I think they actually even used it in ads. I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Um. But no, that that is a fun game. So, so hopefully, it ends up being good. And and like you said, the uh, um, No More Heroes three did get official release date. I think it was October nineteenth, mm-hmm. uh, October eleventh. So close, one week off. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's coming to everything. So, yep. if you're looking to play it. There you go. I'm I'm picking this up on Steam. It's it's just gonna have to happen. It's just how it works. Yeah. Hopefully, it's you know a solid port. We'll I hope so. But uh, otherwise, I, oh yeah, go on. Oh no, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say, um, I you know I I did recently play back through this game up to uh the the monster like first person monster exploration haunted school part. I did recently play through it completely up to that part on a stream, and I mean it was so much fun. And I'm super like I like I made the conscious effort that and conscious effort. Listen, I made the conscious decision that when I got to that part and I was like, this is so good. But like, I've been literally just pushing myself through this terrible performance. It's not the worst, but its performance isn't really that good. It's still pretty shaky at best. Um, yeah. At and as such, world, that's when I made the decision. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's when I made the decision. And you spend a lot of time in the overworld. You spend yes. a lot of time in the overworld. I made the decision then and there that um, I'm just going to play through the entire game and do the first like full complete on stream when the new version comes out. So, so that's what I'm waiting for now. I'm waiting for October when I will play through the game in its entirety on stream. Yeah. So excited to play it though, because I mean I've loved everything that I played. Uh, of the game so so there's that that's that's it that's really all i have to say yeah i hope you finally finish it i i, I will it, it's just like i said it's been such a difficult thing to finish because the performance just was all over the place when it first launched and it's still not in the best of positions but then again it's also kind of just the fact that i like there's so many switch games that i want to play and i start playing them and i'm just like this just isn't this isn't up to snuff, and I I can't do it, mm-hmm. and and it's such a shame because I uh, I used to love the Switch, I I still do to an extent, but.
but it's just it's much harder now. Like a more recent example, um, Rune Factory Five is was a Switch exclusive until last week. The PC version that they just released is so leaps and bounds better than the original Switch version that released in like February of this year. Mm-hmm. And like they only had between that and like four months of difference and the actual like quality difference is just leaps and bounds. And I know it's like, Oh, well of course it is. Cause it's a fucking PC game, but there's something you need to realize about PC ports in general. And this is the truth. And I think Nick will back me up on this. Maybe. Japanese studios don't make good ports. No, they just don't. No, so don't. the fact that NIS made a good port of a incredibly poorly running switch game. You know, it's funny. It has such a quick turnaround. Especially NIS. I feel like NIS is one of the worst of of the Japanese developers of making ports. Because if you remember when, like, Disgaea first came out. (laughs) I feel like Square Enix is is actually the worst, in my opinion, Uh, at this point. Square Enix is really bad. I don't know. Because the games for NIS straight up just didn't run well. Whereas Square Enix took their games and just fucking... Chop them Didn't up and bastardize them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Care. It's it's yeah. for two different, two totally different reasons. Well, I I would say, um, so uh, I'll go ahead and at least say this: Square Enix is the one of the only developers I have ignored on Steam. Mm-hmm. So like that's how bad Square Enix games are on PC, in my opinion. Um. I'll, I'll give you a few examples. Uh, Outriders had really shitty shader compilation issues. Um, things like that. And uh, Final Fantasy VII is good. Integrate is really good. Runs very, very well. But like when Final Fantasy XV originally came out on PC, that shit ran like horse dung. It was just fucking trash. It was actually bad. Um, I'm going to get a few other examples because it's just easier to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, why the fuck aren't you showing me Square? I guess because I fucking ignored them. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. I oh wait, hide ignored items. Oh look, there we go. Uh, yeah. Even things like uh the new you life is the, strange. You, you went through the released. effort to actually block <laughs> block them on your fucking Steam. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> absolutely. That's, that's that's a whole new form of just hating. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Nier Automata. Like, let, let's talk about that. How That's shit nasty was that? Versions level of hate. <laughs> that how, how shit was that? You know, you I got mean, the Life is Strange remaster. Fucking trash. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it just, uh, yeah, that, that is that I did go to extreme lengths to uh, to hate Square Enix more or less. Fuck uh, nasty, nastiest hater. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's not that difficult, actually, though. If you go, if you click uh, Square Enix for it's developer, it's not that it's difficult. It's that that you put the effort in. I think that's more, so, more yeah. so what makes me yeah. laugh about it. I mean, like Chrono Cross, for instance. Oh, like, that... don't stop it! <laughs> don't hurt my heart. Babylon's Fall, like that's just a bad game in general. But the PC yeah. version ran even fucking worse. How do you remaster a game like Life is Strange and make it worse than the original? I don't know, but Square Enix did it. You can literally look on the fucking, like, <laughs> the forms and see the pictures that people have posted. You just got people T-posing in the background for no reason whatsoever. When it comes to effort and Square Enix, you could not name a worse pair when it comes to PC games. Like Marvel's well, Avengers, they... fucking trash game, but also fucking trash port. It's just banger after banger after banger of the absolute shit from Square Enix on PC. <laughs> they do. I already say it extends to everything. They fuck up so many other ports. You're right. Like it's not even, not even just that. I mean, you it's think part of the really specifically PC, but yes. Uh, I'm. Well, I'm your Switch stuff is garbage. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, oh, what was yeah. it? Fire, uh, fire, uh, not fire. I keep on trying to say fire. Well, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles is just like a complete yep. shit remaster. Mm-hmm. You have the Kingdom Hearts games that are all cloud instead yep. of actually, and they're like even unplayable. The cloud versions mm-hmm. are unplayable. Um, and it's not even like an internet thing, it's just like they're actually unplayable. They just do um, the bare minimum to be like, we did something. 
And then yeah, they coast really... off of Final Fantasy fourteen a lot of the time. And they're more indie centric titles, like for instance, Power Wash Simulator that just recently came out. That's what they, they coax it? off of. What? They publish that? Yeah, they publish that. Oh my god. That's what they that's what they coast off of t- in order to like stay relevant. And and the, the thing is Final Fantasy fourteen, the director of that is the only reason that game does well. Because he and his team actually care about that product there have been so many times where square enix has been like yeah we need you to do this and he's been like fuck off i'm making you money eat my dick and they've been like all right uh duly noted goodbye and then they just let him do what he wants <laughs> so i mean not even only that but square enix was the first publisher to be like so you know how games are 70 dollars now on the playstation what if we made them seventy dollars on PC also, mm. which they have done? Why yeah, yeah, no, they did. Yeah, there's no reason you didn't upgrade PC hardware. You're not a new system. We don't have PC two. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, they used to sell Super Nintendo games at seventy dollars. <laughs> My they point is, a digital copy of a game, Mike, on PC that isn't going to be scarce in any way whatsoever and doesn't cost any money to produce because it's just data does not need to be $70. No, it should be, never be $70. It would be scarce because they're going to replace it with a worse version later, Brandon. It's okay. We'll just pirate it because fucking Square Enix can't do shit right. Yeah, they're just going to... It's it's fake scarcity. It's not that they're going to run out of bandwidth. It's that they're going to replace it with a lesser version. So You're probably not even wrong and that really hurts. <laughs> Uh, I will say the Final Fantasy 7 remaster that was released on PC like last month mm-hmm. really fucking good like immaculate that's yeah. actually a very good port but I also feel like if they would have fucked up Final Fantasy 7 remake on PC everyone would be like rioting in the streets it's, so. it's, their, it's like they're big 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 things they usually don't fuck up like I mean that one they did well with Dragon Quest um 11 Oh, Dragon Quest is pretty, yes. pretty decent, actually. And Dragon Quest yeah. was also pretty decent. But you also have to look at the fact that the PC version, as well as like the other console versions, uh, were missing a lot of content, and then you had to pay more for them. That's than also you did true, and one of the main. That's one of the main reasons that I like. I I bought it. I think I had it on PlayStation, and that I didn't play it because like the S edition just got announced, whatever the fuck that was, mm-hmm. and I got it again for Switch, and I was like, I really like this game, and now it's on Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the Switch really version good. of Dragon Quest XI was really good. Yeah, uh, then, then porting that to Game Pass was the smartest idea. Or just porting it to Xbox in general. And yeah, because PlayStation still doesn't have the S version, does it? I don't think it does. Mm, I don't know, actually. I'm not sure. It might. I don't, I don't know if they did for like PS5. I see. honestly don't know, but I do know one thing, and that that's Square Enix's shit. <laughs> they don't do bad in Square or in the, um, Dragon Quest, though. No, 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 no. Uh, and and I think that's because of the developers of Dragon Quest. Again, Dragon Quest is such a like darling in Japan that I think if Square Enix stepped up and fucked oh. it up, there would be rioting. <laughs> on Amazon, they show Dragon Quest. Yep, S is on the PlayStation Four. Okay, cool. I was unaware of that. Thanks for. It's currently on sale too. If anybody's interested in buying it, it's on sale for twenty four dollars. That's a game you should actually buy. That is actually a very good game. Mm-hmm. I like that game. Some of the, like, good Square Enix games, I would say, are worth buying are uh, Dragon Quest, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. That's a very good Which is game. actually on Game Pass, so you don't have to buy it. Yep. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna go to bat for Power Wash Simulator, but that's also on <laughs> Game Pass, so check it out. Dude, there's something so zen about that game. That just... Let me tell you something. You think Power Wash Simulator the game is in? Try doing it in real life because let me tell you something about Power Washing, baby. <laughs> it's, it's Zen no matter the format. <laughs> yeah, but listen. Six player online co-op? I'll buy six Power Washers and have a couple of my boys come over to the house. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Bro, dude, I want to be over there with you. That sounds fucking amazing. Y'all want to come power wash my driveway? We can draw dicks in the fucking dirt that we clean up. Yeah, let's dude, do that, it. That sounds like fun. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, I'm saying. Yeah. 
Replicant's really good. New Replicant version. Not going to list off the numbers. Do it. Uh, Saga Frontier. Uh, and like I said, Final Fantasy XIV. You really can't go wrong with Final Fantasy XIV. I do think that they did an incredible job with that game in general. And that there is a lot of passion and love behind that game. Uh, even though Square Enix is like, please stop loving your product. And the director is quite literally just like, no, I don't think I will. <laughs> hey, you, saw, you saw that, right, Nick? Like, they What's had that? to delay it, and the director, like, fucking hand wrote apologies to the players and sent them out and everything. I did not see and that. And no. did a full video apology because he couldn't meet a deadline for the release date. And literally, like, all the players of the game were like, bro, it's okay. We understand. It's fine. And it's like, you never see that happen in the no. gaming industry. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. There are some good developers tied to Square Enix, but Square Enix as a whole is a shit show. Yes, definitely. Uh, I'll get off my I hate Square Enix soapbox now. Sorry. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I had to touch on, and super quick, because it's just kind of, it's, it's interesting, kind of weird thing. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's more important to me than probably will be to you guys. Um, but uh, interestingly, um, the Monster Hunter Sunbreak Amiibo are not in the U.S. for whatever oh, reason. Okay. Yeah, they are releasing worldwide, but as far as anyone can tell, they're not planned to be released in the U.S. And they have been scrubbed from Capcom's website. Oh. So yeah, that's like you can get if you live in the U.K. You can get them. If you live in Japan, you can get them. But there, I don't know if GameStop like was gonna do it and then change their mind, like they did it with the last two sets. Don't know. Um, but just I'm so sorry. There. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, that's interesting. I yeah. keep seeing the the Byleth Amiibo at Target, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, Nintendo's been pretty good about like making sure that Amiibo for games that are using them currently are reprinted. So that's why you're seeing Byleth now because it is usable in three hopes so because three hopes does have amiibo support mm -hmm. um so th i mean that is something they i think that's kind of like their new strategy now maybe just that kind makes of sense. yeah do like smaller printings of amiibo and just kind of specialize them for games that use them almost as like a kind of collector's edition kind of thing which i think is cool you know for the people that want it you just kind of get a nice little figurine that does something extra in the game and for those that want it, it's just kind of whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of nice when you get things like, you know, the Bioleth Amiibo where they're designed like they're intended to be. It's like cross-game. It's like, hey, this was his Smash uh, Amiibo, but you can use it in three hopes. And it will do something neat for if you have it. So does it change anything? No, not particularly. It's just kind of like a neat, neat little feature. So, yeah. I think, it, I think in three hopes, it just gets you some, like, extra weapon drops. Like nothing like nothing crazy. Um definitely not feature breaking like uh the loft wing amiibo was for Skyward Sword where people got super bent out of shape. Um mm. but, um yes yeah, so that's it. I mean I'm importing the the Monster Hunter amiibo from Japan. And I think I talked about this before it's actually cheaper for me to import them than it was to get them from GameStop shipped to my house last time anyways. Oh so I'm like that's which incredible. is ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah. Well, it's because GameStop charged you like a flat shipping cost per item, and they didn't do like even though it was like eighty dollars or ninety dollars worth of amiibos, like they didn't do like free shipping over twenty five dollars. Whereas, like, um, I think it ended up being like fifteen or twenty dollars cheaper to order them from Japan because I think GameStop was trying to charge me twenty dollars for shipping. I think That's it was ridiculous. The, yeah, and like <laughs> to ship them from Japan, it was cheaper. That's insane. It's like I mean, it's, sometimes you can even catch that shit on like Amazon.jp and they'll have no problem shipping that shit right to your fucking front door. Yeah, no, that's where I bought that's where I bought the last set of Monster Hunter Amiibo from, and that's where I have yeah. these ones pre ordered from too. They have no problem with it. And like I said, I think I'm paying like not even I think maybe like ten or fifteen dollars for shipping. Um, which like I said was pretty significantly cheaper than what I got from GameStop last time. So um price wise it's it's nominal. Um to like get them from Japan, and it was cheaper than GameStop. I said ten or fifteen dollars, which is nuts, nuts. Oh yeah. Um, there's no reason it should be cheaper to order the same item from Japan 
and have it shipped to you than to get it from a store that's literally going to ship it to you like from a local store and cost more. No reason. Um, but I don't know. GameStop's going through some rough stuff right now. So, because mm-hmm. they just, they just, what did they do? They laid off their CFO. They, yeah, they fired like, like some high people. Yeah. And then I think laid off like a good chunk of their like internal employees. So, I don't know. And then they canceled conference permanently, I heard too. Mm. Which was, uh, I mean, conference was like pretty much the biggest, like, I don't know how to put this. It was the most like rejuvenating part of being at GameStop because as for shitty as the other uh, 50 weeks of the year, 51 weeks of the year was, that one week was actually like really good. Um, but then just to like take that out too, it just kind of like sucks away. Like any reason to stay there. So like, now you're poorly paid, poorly treated, and you don't even get anything. They don't even give away like free consoles anymore. Yeah. Like the freebies are all just like lanyards and t-shirts and like they barely get anything that sucks um but yeah i don't know i i'm surprised that company's still holding around yeah honestly yeah. so anyways i don't know that's all i got news wise are you guys ready to wrap up yep yeah i'm ready yeah all right well thank you everyone for listening to us tonight don't forget you can find us on itunes stitcher google amazon our website game-crunch.com uh, if you want to reach out to us, we're on Facebook, Twitter, or you can send us an email at gamecrunchcast at gmail.com. Brandon. Hello. Any final thoughts? Yeah, stream every Saturday on twitch.tv uh, Kagato Asuka. K-A-G-A-T-O-A-S-U-K-A. Uh, this week we'll be streaming Sea of Thieves with my wife. and My wife? <laughs> what? I, no, I said it like uh, Bora. I said, my wife. My wife. Uh, my wife, yeah. who? Yeah, there we go, that one. First yeah. of all, if I pop into your streams as you in a body pillow, I'm going to be like, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, me and GP will also be playing as well, so there's that. It's going to be a lot of fun, because um, she hasn't played Sea of Thieves, so that should be fun. That'll be nice. Mm-hmm. This game does it doesn't doesn't it let you like start out as a captain now or something too? Oh, you can you you were always able to be whatever you wanted at mm-hmm. Sea of Thieves. It's just a lot more streamlined now yeah. with um having uh boats that will work based on a lower player count. So oh okay, that, yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah. You used to need to have like a lot of players to get like a boat off the ground and everything, but they've kind of streamlined the boats now and uh, the rigging and whatnot where one player could actually end up doing so by themselves. And it's a lot of fun. I did a two player boat uh, and we had a shit ton of fun. Okay. All right. Well, Nick got nothing. Um, all right. Well, that's that. I'm Mike Anastasia. You can find me online. I'm Clash of Penguin on Twitter, your favorite gaming console. And until next week, Game up. Game on. Video games. Nintendo ornaments went up on like Hallmark this week. Okay. And the only one I want was like sold out, sold out. I was like, you're fucking kidding. Which one was that? The Raccoon Mario. Oh, shit. But it's weird because they're like, because they sent me an email. They're like, oh, come look at our holiday ornament collections live now. But They'll it's come like, back. I know. I've, I've, Amazon had like a placeholder, like, like, hey, you can do, like, a buy it now. We'll just send it once it's available again. I'm like, that's fine. I'm sick of checking the Hallmark website for it. Do you have a Hallmark that's store not. near you? None of them have it. It's sold out yeah. everywhere. The closest I was like, the one, one Hallmark is... store near me 
Like, they get a shit ton of them. The closest store to me that has one is like 120 miles away. Oh, jeez. And well, we, have, keep... we have tons of Hallmark stores around us. I'll just say, I'll, I'll keep an eye out if, the, if, if there's anything that comes out. You're like, hey, I can't find it. Because chances are... I have, I have like two or three Hallmarks, and like whenever those ornaments came out, they had like everything all the time. Yeah, and then... But then they had like the Super Nintendo one. But I was okay. like, I, I do want that one. And it's still on the website. But I'm like, I don't want to pay $6 for shipping for it. No. I'm like, if I bought two, it'd be free. But I'm like, I can't get the Mario one. And then half of the other ornaments are not out yet. They're still coming soon, like this year. Like, I would have done the KK Slider ornament. They yeah. like sings the Animal Crossing theme. Nope, that oh, yeah, I know it yet. sings it. Yeah, it sings it. Fuck. Yeah, that one sings it. And the Super Nintendo plays the Super Mario World music when you turn it on. I love that. Yeah, it's fucking rare. Yeah, fucking so I, I better get the Super Nintendo one. Like I said, I just don't want to pay for the shipping. I'm like, I just want to get two. Yeah. So, and I really hate it when they have like the tiny, tiny ornaments. I'm like, I don't want the tiny, tiny one. I want just regular size one. So, but wait, they can wait. They can wait.